My name is Lisa. I work as a clerk in a small company. I have some big news, I've decided to get married to my boyfriend, Noah. One day. Man, ever since we decided to get married, it's been so busy. You're right. There's more to do than I thought. Well, it's just a happy kind of busy. That's true. Oh, we need to greet your parents on our next day off. All right. I bet my mom and dad will be thrilled. Really? I'd be happy if that's the case. Yeah, I've already talked to them about Lisa, so there's nothing to worry about. Oh, you did? Thanks. But man, these busy days leading up to the wedding. It feels like a countdown to happiness. Countdown? Yeah, a clear countdown to the joy of marriage. And then, after we're married, it'll be like counting up the happy moments. What's that? In that case, I'm already in my count-up mode. Eh, that's nice to hear. Well, I feel the same way. This is Noah. We've been living happily day by day. One day, we decided to visit his parents to give our marriage greetings. We're back. Brought her with me. Sorry for the intrusion. Ah, uh, Noah, welcome back. Welcome. And who might this be? This is the woman who's going to be my wife. Nice to meet you. My name is Lisa. Pleased to make your acquaintance. So you're Lisa. You're such a charming young lady. Pleasure to meet you. We've heard about you from Noah and have been looking forward to meeting you. Thank you for coming today. These are my future in-laws. Both of them were incredibly kind and welcoming. Their home was quite far from ours, but because of their warmth, I wanted to visit them as often as possible. After giving our greetings to the in-laws, our next stop was at the house of Noah's grandmother, Justine, to give our marriage greetings. And then Noah, running out of time, said, Wait, Grandma, let's not talk about that. So what happened? He went to work without wearing underwear. Said he'd buy some at a convenience store on the way. Ah, uh, you said it. I didn't want Lisa to hear that. It's okay. I'll make sure to stock up on underwear for you, all right? See? Now we're teasing me. Noah might be a bit scatterbrained at times, but deep down, he's a kind-hearted boy. Lisa, please take good care of him. Oh, no need to say that. I'm the one asking for your favor, please. This is Justine. Ever since Noah moved to the city for his job, he had been living in her house. Maybe because of that, Justine seems to have a deep fondness for Noah. Watching the two of them interact so warmly always brought a smile to my face. Some time after, I unexpectedly received a call from Justine while I was at work. Hello? Justine? Is something the matter? Hey! You took too long to answer the phone. You really haven't been trained properly. What? Uh... I'm sore. Ugh. Fine, let's move on for now. Listen up. You're coming to my place for the New Year's holiday. And you better bring homemade New Year's dishes for 15 people. What? For 15 people. Of course. If you can't do that much, you're not fit to be a wife in our family. Suddenly, Justine had demanded that I prepare homemade New Year's dishes for 15 people for the holiday. I was completely taken aback, as she seemed like a different person from our previous interactions. However, I am good at cooking, so I decided to take on the challenge. I also discussed the matter with Noah and we decided to spend the next New Year's at Justine's place. Then, a month later. Happy New Year. I hope for your continued kindness this year. Yes, Happy New Year. As per your request over the phone, I've brought New Year's dishes for 15 people. Huh? There's only the two of you? Oh? I thought I told you it was just the two of us today. Lisa dear, what on earth made you bring so much? When I arrived at Justine's house, only Justine and Noah's uncle, Fergus, were there. Seeing my confusion, Justine laughed rather conspicuously. Fergus also had a smug grin on his face, causing a pang of anxiety in my chest. Soon after arriving, Justine immediately had me doing chores around the house, leaving me no time to even sit down. Once I had finished all that was asked of me and made my way to the living room. Lisa, what's with this New Year's dish? It's inedible. Wah! Hmm, perhaps she hasn't had proper bridal training? If you can't even prepare a proper New Year's dish, that's a bad sign. You brought this with such confidence, but tasting it was a shock. Lisa, is there something wrong with your taste buds? And these black bins are completely off. They lack sweetness. But I thought. 
making such a terrible dish and expecting us to eat so much of it. Are you a demon? The Setsa Bun Festival is still a ways off, you know? Demon? You told me to make enough for 15 people, so I did. Silence. Are you trying to blame me? Goodness, such audacity from a young girl. Ah, uh, if you go against my mother, you're done for. You're definitely on a one-way trip to hell now. Wah! Eck, for Noah to marry a woman like you, he's so unlucky. You've made a fool out of me and kept me busy with chores without giving me a chance to sit. I'll make sure to tell Noah everything. Wait, it wasn't my intention to. Enough. If you can't cook, you're not fit to be a wife. Divorce Noah, but with this, he might come back to me. Seeing Fergus and Justine laughing heartily, I felt on the verge of tears. Just then. Hey, Grandma, what did you just say? Eh? Uh, Noah. Wow, why are you here? What about your job? I finished up work early to be here. So, did I miss here? That Lisa is bad at cooking. And something about divorcing me because of it. What's going on? Uh, Lisa is still young. She probably hasn't had much experience with traditional New Year's dishes. Since she seemed unfamiliar with the taste, I just wanted to teach her. Maybe I got carried away and my words went too far, but it was out of kindness. What? Kindness? You teaching her about taste? All right, explain to me. What exactly didn't taste right? Well, for starters, the black bins lack sweetness. The herring roe is too hard to eat. Everything else is bland too. And yet, she brought it with such confidence. I can only assume something is wrong with her taste buds. Ha, ah, something's wrong with Lisa's taste. If anyone's taste is off, it's yours, Grandma. What? What are you talking about? Lisa's family owns a renowned high-end traditional Japanese restaurant. Ever since she was little, she was taught to cook by her chef parents, almost like it was child's play for her. So, without boasting, I am quite confident in my palate. It's truly unfortunate that you both couldn't appreciate the taste of a high-end restaurant. Seeing Noah suddenly appear, Justine and Fergus were taken aback. When I revealed that I had honed my culinary skills in a high-end restaurant. What, a high-end restaurant? Why didn't you say so sooner? You purposely kept it a secret to make a fool out of me, didn't you? I'm sure of it. That's not true. And there's no reason I'd bring that up out of the blue. By the way, the black beans that you said were bad? Noah made those. Yeah, Lisa taught me how to make them. I had to soak them in water and use baking soda. It was quite a task. Still, I made them hoping you'd enjoy them. I'm sorry for making you eat something that wasn't good. Wow. No, I mean, the black beans were actually good. What's with that tone? So you purposely badmouthed Lisa's cooking to put her down. That's slow. I can't believe it. Wait, calm down, Noah. There's a reason for this. When Lisa arrived, she made a mockery of me and had me working non-stop without a break. She acted just like a demon. Yes, a demon bride. So I got a bit upset and might have spoken too harshly. What are you talking about? You were the one who did all that to me, remember? You lied, saying you needed enough food for 15 people. After working so hard to finish the chores, I was criticized about the food. It was so hard for me. What? So, Grandma, you've been lying this whole time? What demon bride are you talking about? What did you do to my precious Lisa? Wake up, Noah. I mean, you're not seeing things clearly. Come back to this house. It's okay if Lisa comes too. Let's all live together here again. I refuse. You probably just want to use me like a servant, like today. When Setsubun comes around, I bet you'd say, demon bride out, and throw beans at me. I feel the same way. Everything's clear now. No matter the circumstances, there's no way we're coming back to this house. Why? Even though I'm begging you, why won't you come back home? Hey, calm down, Mom. You should apologize when you're in the wrong. So, Lisa and Noah, please forgive her. I'll apologize on her behalf too. What are you talking about all of a sudden? Weren't you laughing along with Justine earlier? Stop trying to play the hero. Or do I need to throw beans at you too? What's with that attitude? I'm trying to mediate here. Such an impertinent girl. That's why you're unfit to be a bride. Trying to save face in front of Noah, Justine and Fergus continued to pile on lies. As I corrected each one, they eventually became enraged. And then... Enough, both of you. This farce ends now. Please, both of you, calm down. 
mother-in-law, father-in-law. Why are you here? We heard from Noah that the two of you would be here for the new year. We also heard that Lisa was making the New Year's meal, so we got worried and decided to come. Justine has a penchant for tormenting her daughters-in-law. Everyone in the family dislikes her. Whenever there's a family gathering, we always discuss who will keep Justine in check. Who are you calling troublesome? Don't barge into my house and say whatever you like. Enough. You've been saying you want to live with Noah, but you have no genuine feelings for him. I know about the debt you and Fergus have. You're desperate for money. Bois, dead? I have no recollection of such a thing. Ha, ha. Right, what are you two even talking about? Wait, you wanted me to come back just for money? No, I genuinely wanted Noah back. I can't believe you anymore. When I lived here, I gave you more than 100,000 yen a month. You got a taste for it, didn't you? So you wanted to milk me for more money? Yes, you were my golden goose. I raised you well. And then you found a maid and left. I just wanted to show you where your home is. The golden goose. That's how you saw me? Grandma, I'm cutting ties with you. We won't ever interact again. Me too. I'm cutting ties with you, mother. Finally, we don't have to deal with this household anymore. Qua, cutting ties. You're all being too dramatic. It's not an exaggeration. It's how we genuinely feel. Hey, Lisa, help me out here. Why should I help you? Isn't it your attitudes that need fixing? Wah! Please, we can't go on if we're cut off. Help us. Ah, uh, my time is short. Show some compassion at the end of my life. Hey, Dad, she's talking about compassion. Yes, I understand. In this case, compassion means to quickly put an end to it. Wah! No, that's not. Let's inform all the relatives about what happened today. They will surely want to cut ties with you, too. If that happens... I won't have anyone to turn to. You brought this upon yourself. Accept the consequences. Wait! I have a long way to go. Can't someone help? Stop whining and work. How long do you intend to leech off your parents? But, working at this age... You need money, right? And you want it. Then work and stop complaining. It's okay. You're still young. There are even opportunities for senior citizens nowadays. You mean... I still have to work. Thus, Noah and I severed our ties with Justine and completely cut off any connection with Fergus. My mother-in-law reported the whole incident to the extended family, and upon hearing it, everyone decided to sever ties with Justine. Left with no one to turn to, Justine desperately clung to Fergus. However, the only work Fergus could find was low-paying, simple part-time jobs. Paying off the interest on their debt became challenging, and their debt snowballed rapidly. The two, who could aptly be described as elderly needing care, began to consider regrettable choices as they fled from debt collectors. And so, they were destined to lead a life filled with despair. On a side note, we took the New Year's feast home afterward and enjoyed it with my in-laws. As for our family… Oh, Lisa, Noah, so glad you could make it. Mom, you're a bit too energetic there. Thank you for having us, mother-in-law. Ah, uh, you too, finally decided to come by. Your mom's been like this since morning. Honestly, it's been a bit challenging to deal with. Well, she's quite the food enthusiast. So, Lisa, what dish are you going to teach me today? I can't make anything too fancy, you know? That's okay. That's what I like. Even ordinary dishes can have a surprising twist, right? Isn't that just wonderful? Yeah, I must brag, but Lisa's cooking is amazing, especially her Japanese dishes. The other day's Shawan Mushi, steamed egg custard, was out of this world. Look at this guy, casually flaunting his happiness. Oh, that sounds delicious. Lisa, please teach me how to make it. Of course, I'd be happy to share. Hey mom, you're too close. That's some strong facial pressure you've got there, like a pressure cooker. You didn't actually say that, did you? I'm sorry, this face is more potent than I thought. It's a faulty one that can't relieve its own pressure. What was that, dear? Ah, suddenly I'm feeling so hungry. Oh, speaking of, Lisa prepared some dishes for us at home. Oh, how delightful. It's tsukun, Japanese chicken meatballs, with shiso, hijiki seaweed, and lotus root. Ah, that sounds delectable. When she was making it, the aroma was so tantalizing. Here, let's eat this first. Would it be alright if I used your kitchen, mother-in-law? Of course, of course, and I'll even lend you a hand. We don't need the hands of a pressure cooker. Lisa dear, 
Does this sukun have a lot of mustard inside? Wait, wait, my dear. I apologize. He's definitely not reflecting on his actions. Since that day, our interactions with my in-laws have become much more frequent. The reason being, after tasting my homemade dishes, my mother-in-law became utterly smitten with the flavors. Thus, we occasionally started holding what felt like cooking classes. Compared to my parents, my culinary skills still have a long way to go, so I feel a bit embarrassed when praised too much. However, seeing the joyful faces of my in-laws as they savor the food makes me incredibly happy. Noah enjoys my cooking daily and always tells me how delicious it is. I hope to use this opportunity to learn the flavors of Noah's family home, aiming to recreate those nostalgic tastes for him. In this way, I'm determined to work hard every day to keep the smiles on our family's faces. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel for more great content. Just click on the subscribe button below and don't forget to ring the notification bell so you'll be the first to know when I upload a new video. See you in the next one.